the talent at Ohio State, sometimes you see some guys that disappointed at this level but are still good enough and still bring enough talent to the table that uh, the NFL scouts are interested. Well, the one guy uh, that we didn't talk about that you know is going to be drafted early, second, third round is um, Elfline, the uh, center. Um, you know, he's top one, two centers uh, on most people's boards. Uh, not going to be a big time center that gets drafted first round, but I think uh, you will see um, Elfline come up second, third round somewhere as one of the first two centers taken off the board. Uh, I really think the way that this, the talent levels lined up, that I think there's going to be a huge push on DBs and uh, wide receivers um, early on. So guys like um, Elfline, who normally might get late first round um, type of grades this year is kind of being pushed to second and third because there's so many different types of playmakers out there. So he's the one that I think is uh, well, one of the seven that I think are pretty much guaranteed to be drafted for the Buckeyes. You've got three other guys that are kind of uh, on the bubble. Uh, one of them I think will probably go somewhere in the seventh. And that's Cam uh, Johnston, the uh, punter. Um, I think some team will come in and grab him seventh round. Uh, the big fear with him is uh, he has this great leg, uh, but he was always kind of doing the rugby style punts. People were worried that he wasn't able to punt normal like the um, NFL kind of uh, prefers. Uh, he showed during the uh, combine during pro days that he can do that, uh, was still booming the uh, ball off. Um, so I think some team will come in and grab him late in the draft. Hopefully no one kind of holds how old he is since he's a punter and age really shouldn't matter. You've got like Leckler out there who's, I think, 74, still punting. So uh, Cam Johnson, I think, is 28 right now. So he's a lot older than most people are coming into the draft. But as a punter, that really shouldn't matter too much. So I see him coming late. Uh, the two really wild cards, one is Dontre uh, Wilson. Um, Kind of was it's it's hard to uh, talk about him because he showed so much promise at times, especially early on in his career. Um, started as a freshman, um, kind of battled injuries, um, battled other playmakers for the next couple of years. Guys like Braxton Miller and Curtis Samuel kind of stepped up into this um, H back role, kind of bumped Dontre back. Um, Battled foot injuries for it seemed like two years. This was his first year kind of back almost at full strength. So uh, he's been working hard. There's a lot of videos out there of, of his personal um, workouts. Um, he's trying hard. So it'll be interesting to see if he's able, if he was able to work his way up into the seventh round after really no production for the Buckeyes here these last three years or so. Um, and then the other one's Corey Smith. It's another uh, situation where. Um, injuries kind of derailed his uh, um, career. He was a JUCO transfer, uh, started last year, kind of battled foot um, injuries going on into this year, never really got healthy until the playoffs, and they tried to get him uh, playing. So I think Michigan was his first real game back. So uh, he's another guy that's probably not going to be drafted, but he might have been able to play his way up into the seventh round-ish. Uh, but I fully expect Wilson Smith to meet more of the undrafted free agents. And that might be better for them because they can uh, sit back and kind of choose where they want to go and what situation is going to be best for them. Because Dontre Wilson is going to be in the same boat as uh, Curtis Samuel is, where he did a lot of um, H back, a lot of running back, a lot of you know slot wide receiver, but he was never that wide receiver that lined up on the um, outside. So he's going to have to find his perfect spot just like Curtis Samuel is. And Dontre Wilson might have – a better opportunity to choose his spot than definitely Curtis Samuel will. Brandon, to your point about Shane Leckler, is there a better position in professional sports than <laughs> NFL punter? If if you want to stay out of the fray, you're not going to get hit, so the physical punishment's not there. You're also not the field goal kicker who's got the game on the line with a 48-yarder and you're going to get booed by 80,000 people when you miss it. Basically, unless you shank an 18 yarder as long as you're kicking them 45 yards nobody's even if you kick it into the end zone when you really shouldn't because you're paid to kick it inside the 10 nobody's jumping on your back at least in the stadium <laughs> you pretty much collect your 750,000 to a million and if you stick around for a while you're collecting three and five million dollars yeah. a year and you punt yeah i think the only thing um comparable to that is maybe a fifth outfielder on a, a baseball team you know you're collecting your $370,000 a year and you just sit the bench and swing the bat maybe 20 times a year. So, um, yeah, I mean, punters where it's at. And that's why I think Cam Johnson has the chance, 
Um, you know, like if he was a wide receiver coming out at age 28, um, 29 teams would hold that. I'm against them, but I think punter is the perfect spot for him. And as they show, you can play until you're late in age there. Brandon, just to catch you up, I think the minimum in both the Major League Baseball and in the NFL is more like pushing 600,000. Where have I been? <laughs> now, Dontre Wilson, the one thing I will say about him is, is it just me or we expected so much out of him and there was so much hype surrounding him coming out of Texas. And the first several times that I saw him on the field, I was like, wow, yeah, this guy is quick. And of course, at his size, you're Dexter McCluster, you're uh, a lot of guys come to mind, Darren Sproles. You have to be the quickest guy in the field. You have to be yeah. really quick in space because you're you're not going to break tackles. Uh, and he seemed like that guy, but then the further he went along in his career, he just didn't seem like anything special out there. No, there were very, there have been very few guys here over the last, you know, 10 years that came in with as much hype as, uh, Wilson did. Uh, he was a late flip, uh, from, um, Oregon. Um, uh, he came into, I believe it was spring practice, even early, um, enrolled, or maybe it was fall practice. It was so long ago, but, I just remember his first couple of days at practice, all people talked about was how great he was and how fast he was and just how um, dominant he was. And when you have an Urban Meyer type of offense, you know, then it right away, as soon as you get somebody fast and speedy, it, um, it automatically turns into, oh, he's the next Percy Harvin. Um, so you heard about Dontre Wilson being the next uh, Percy Harvin. Uh, he showed a lot of flashes as a freshman. Uh, he got killed by those um, ankle tackles, it seemed like. I mean, he was just so much faster than everyone else. Um, it would be like the last guy would just trip him up um, on kick returns or on uh, the um, end of rounds and stuff. So uh, just so much hype for him. I think it was too much hype. I think Buckeye fans were still new to Urban Meyer um, and how – Urban Meyer likes to hype up his younger players. Uh, you see it right now with uh, J.K. Um, Dobbins, how you know every um, interview Urban Meyer ha has, Dobbins is uh, talked about. You know, once we get to the season, Dobbins is probably going to have twenty to a thirty carries. You know, um, last year guys like um, Austin Mack and Benjamin uh, Victor were the ones that he was talking about a bunch. So there's always guys that Urban Meyer talks about. That was one of our first years, and so Dontre Wilson was the one that he was raving about. Built up the um, expectations so much that he could just never live up to it. Um, injuries really kind of derailed him. When you start having a lot of lower leg type stuff for a guy as fast and who's built on speed and juking out people and making big plays, it starts to build up. And you know, some of that had to be <clears throat> um, mental too, because. I mean, that has to weigh on him, too. I mean, imagine having that much um, expectations by a fan base as big as the uh, Buckeyes, plus battling school, plus battling um, injuries. Uh, so it all looked like it just weighed on him. Hopefully he's able to kind of just put all that um, behind him. He's definitely got the skill to be a NFL-level type of player. It just hasn't shown that he's been able to put it all together yet. So he's one guy that I will be rooting for to kind of sneak in there towards the end. Yeah, and Urban Meyer had made some comments early in Dontre Wilson's career that we need to be able to bring him back next season and he needs to be stronger so we can put him in pass protection. We can do some different things. He can block a little bit, but he needs to maintain the speed. And that's not always the, the easiest formula to hit on uh, as well. Yeah, but it's – yeah, I mean, he came in um, – very um, undersized. And I think guys like Benjamin Victor is kind of fighting that same battle right now where they come in smaller. Urban Meyer, if you're going to play wide receiver, your primary thing is going to be pass blocking. So that's what they were kind of building up Dontre uh, with was, okay, he's super fast. He's got the moves. He's going to juke people out. Now we're going to put 20 pounds on him and he's going to be a complete um, wide receiver. He's going to be able to start and go out there. And I just don't think he was ever able to do that. He put on the weight. Uh, maybe it slowed him down some. Maybe it slowed down his confidence. Um, yeah, you just – you know that with Urban Meyer, pass protection's a, a big deal, and that's what he kept on kind of pushing towards with Wilson, and it just never ultimately came all together. All right, we love talking Ohio State football each and every Wednesday night with uh, Brandon Zimmerman from the Buckeye Battle Cry. Brandon, we appreciate it.
All right. Thank you, Mark.